Hey everyone, I'm Mariana and I am back with another movie review. I thought I was done reviewing 2019 movies. I didn't think anything else was going to break into my top 10 so I wouldn't feel the need to review it. But then I went to see 1917, so... Here we are. And just so you know, yes, I will be posting my top 10 movies of 2019 video next. I just wanted to get this review out to you guys first because, spoiler alert, this film is definitely going to be a part of that video. So subscribe if you're not subscribed so you don't miss my top 10 and let's talk about 1917. As I am sure you already know, this is an epic war film, particularly a World War I film. It follows two British soldiers who have to cross enemy territory and deliver an important message that could save 1600 soldiers, one of whom is the brother of one of the protagonists. I will tell you right away that I personally tend to really connect with war films in general if they're done well, but this film here is great and I would absolutely recommend it to anybody regardless of whether they have an interest in war films or not. 19 1917 combines insane tension with characters you want to root for, which is obviously a winning combination, plus it is visually stunning, has a beautiful score, it's pretty much a must watch. Roger Deakins did some amazing work here and it makes sense that the cinematography is the first thing a lot of people want to talk about when they talk about 1917. The film is presented to feel like you're watching the events unfold in real time. It's meant to look like one continuous shot and Deakins finds some really impressive ways to show up his skills. Don't think that just because we're following the same two characters the entire time, it let Deacons get lazy in any way. Absolutely not. If anything, he got more creative with this one because there are some amazing, amazing visually stunning scenes. There is a sequence in this film that takes place during nighttime that is completely unforgettable. You have these shadows moving, the way the lighting looks is completely surreal. It is unlike like anything I've seen this year. It's definitely one of my favorite scenes of the year. Plus, on top of that, there is a lot going on in the scene and you're just a ball of tension and concern. You just, this movie never lets go. And there are other scenes like it that I felt were very impressive, but this one stood out to me the most. And you will know what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie or you'll know when you watch it. I think Roger Deakins needs another Oscar. Just saying. The entire film is a race against time to begin with. If the message doesn't arrive in time, 1,600 soldiers will walk into a trap and it will turn into a massacre. We find that out early on, so that is in the back of our minds the entire time. But adding to this tension is the fact that we follow the two main characters throughout the whole film and with the one continuous shot approach, we only see what they see. So as the audience, we just know never know what's around the corner. This filming style makes it a very immersive experience, and I love that Mendes wanted to make the film like this from the very beginning. That's the shooting style he wanted, and it absolutely pays off because it just elevates all of the stress. But this isn't to say that there is nothing else to this film other than the technical aspect. I personally definitely felt for the two lead characters. There isn't a ton of character development, but you get enough about them that you know what kind of people they are. As the film goes on, you slowly put together the details as you learn more about these two guys. There's Lance Corporal Blake, played by Dean Charles Chapman, whom you probably remember as Tom and Baratheon from Game of Thrones, and he is a very easy character to like. He is kind, he loves his family, he's a little bit naive, and there is just a sweetness about him. Plus, the mission is personal for him, because his brother is one of the 1600 soldiers they're trying to save. And then there is Lance Corporal Schofield, played by George McKay, who is a much more reserved person. He definitely internalizes a lot of what happens. He opens up as the film goes on, and his more guarded character makes more sense as we get to know him better. But he is definitely the star of this film. Both actors did a fantastic job, but I thought George McKay 
in particular was excellent in this film, and I was almost hoping he would get a nomination. I was pretty sure he wouldn't, which he didn't, but I do think he deserved one. The supporting cast doesn't have a lot to do here, as those roles are very small, but it was really nice to see some big names in there, and they were kind of making way for the new talent. I appreciated that. Now, it is obvious that there is a lot of preparation that went into this film, and as I mentioned earlier, it absolutely paid off. I mean, they dug about a mile of trenches and had to dress those trenches to make those look realistic. They committed to the real-time filming style, which also presented them with challenges of using mostly natural lighting, and if you ever tried using natural lighting and trying to make it look you know, seamless with the continuity, you know how difficult that is. I mean, as we've seen before, I can't film a YouTube video without having my lighting changed three times. So yeah, no idea how they pulled it off. They obviously did a ton of research, particularly studying firsthand accounts. And while 1917 is not based on a specific story, it actually draws from stories that director Sam Mendes heard from his grandfather, who did fight in the First World War. Mendes wanted to give the audience an idea of what it was like, what these soldiers went through. He wanted to capture the spirit of what his grandfather told him, as well as the sacrifice of these men, and I think he absolutely succeeded. When the movie ended, I was so emotional about it. I was incredibly invested throughout the film, and all of the tension and stress of it kind of held me back from fully processing my emotions. There were a couple of scenes throughout the film where I started tearing up, but overall it was just, it was more about the stress for me. But as I was realizing I was watching the last shots of the film, my mind just let go of all of that tension and I was overwhelmed by all of my pinned up emotions. I was crying. It was ridiculous the effect this film had on me. Lastly, I have to talk about the music. This Thomas Newman score is my my favorite score of the year. And that's saying something because I have appreciated quite a few musical scores this year. There have been some great ones in 2019, but this one just takes the cake for me. The music is fantastic. It gets me choked up when I'm listening to it. I am absolutely going to add this to my collection. And yeah, I, I have to mention it because it is it is beautiful. So do I recommend you go see 1917 in theaters? What do you guys think? Absolutely. This film is amazing. I saw it on the big screen. I actually saw it in IMAX, and that is how I would suggest you experience it. But if you don't have an IMAX around you, that's totally fine. Just see it on the biggest screen you can and, you know, just enjoy all of the stress. Do not dismiss this as just another war movie. This film is amazing. It is impressive, intense on a whole other level from the technical standpoint. Sam Mendes directs the hell out of it and I'm going to give 1917 a 10 out of 10. I've only given two 10 out of 10s this year, and this is my second one, which makes me very happy because I love when I see a film that really speaks to me that much and really has that big of an effect on me. So yes, absolutely. Go see it if you haven't. Go see it on the big screen and let me know what you thought of it in the comments below because I would love to talk to you about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. If you have seen 1917 already, I would love to discuss it with you in the comments below, so let me know. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and a special thank you to the patrons whose names are on the screen right now. You guys support me a little bit extra and I am incredibly, incredibly grateful. I hope everyone enjoyed this video and if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Share it, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you very soon with my top 10 movies of 2019. Bye.